So uh, moving over to our next presenter, um, Professor Yasin D. Al Jaburi. Um, he was born in Baghdad in, uh, in Iraq, 1946, and is a renowned scholar and translator, <clears throat> holding a BA English from the English Department, College of Arts in Baghdad, from Baghdad University, and eventually graduated from Atlanta University, now Clark's Atlanta University in 1978. Throughout his educational journey, Yasin became actively involved in the Muslim Student Association of the United States and Canada, which later merged with the Islamic Society of North America, SNA, in 19, and in 1973, he played a crucial role in establishing Atlanta's first Islamic center, where he delivered sermons as the imam, and the society's bi-monthly newsletter widely became circulated in the United States and abroad. Yasin's tal talent as a translator became evident with the publication of his first translated book by martyr Muhammad Bakr, a Sadr, in 1979, and he continued to translate and write numerous books, with 14 of them being published by Ansadian Publication of Qum, Iran. Following his move to northwestern, uh, northern, sorry, Virginia in 1982, he founded the International Islamic Society of Virginia and resumed the publication and distribution of Islamic affairs. His contribution to the field of Islamic literature expanded further when he was he was commissioned by Tariqe Darsil -e Quran, based in New York, to edit and revise three English translations of the Holy Quran. And he continues to publish books in the United States, making his works available worldwide. And he's the author of 82 books, mashallah. Um, the title of his Quran translation is Holy Quran, Text and Translation. And the presentation title uh, for today's session is Two Reasons Promoted Me to Undertake the Task of Producing a New English Translation of the Holy Quran. And I appreciate uh, Professor Mahdi for being such in time. And I hope uh, that Professor Yasin is going to be uh, similarly. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Professor Yasin. Is it now better? Sister? It's much better. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salat wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, Qaha al-Ameen, wa ala alihi al-Tayyibin al-Qahreen, wa ashabihi al-Tuhur al-Mayameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and many, many, many thanks to the organizers of this great conference. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you for your great effort. I will enter into my subject in directly and focus on two issues that prompted me uh, a long time ago, as far as 1974, when I started editing and uh, publishing my Society's Islamic Affairs Newsletter, by monthly newsletter, which, by the way, are the prime of the circulation. It was sent out to 67 countries abroad and covering all the 50 American states. It became very widely circulated. Okay. Uh, now, I am referring to two issues that made me consider seriously translating the whole Quran. Number one, is it really justifiable while translating the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to describe the prophet, the man for whom the Almighty created everything as being unlettered? Have you heard the Christians describing Christ alayhi salam as being unlettered? Have you heard the Jews describing Moses alayhi salam as being unlettered? If not, and surely the answer is not. How can we justify our calling the Prophet of Islam and letter one who knows neither reading nor writing? قال الدار الإفتاء المصرية إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لقب بالأمي لأنه كان لا يقرأ ولا يكتب وهذه صفة كان يتصف بها غالب العرب في ذلك الوقت قال الله تعالى هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم Surat Al-Jum'ah, Ayah Rakam, the second verse of Surat Al-Jum'ah Friday. The translation of this text is the Egyptian house of Ifta that is issuing binding religious edicts. It stated that the messenger of Allah وسلم, was called Ummi, illiterate or unlettered, because he did not know how to read or write, a characteristic which 
distinguished most Arabs at that time. The Almighty has said the following in verse 158 of Surah Al-Araf, the heights or elevated places. Uh, so believe in Allah and in his, in his messenger, the end lettered prophet who believed in Allah and in his words. Follow him so that you may work, walk in the right way. Quran 7, 158. As Abdullah Yusuf Ali translates it. وفي الصحيحين عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أنه سمع النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يقول إن أمة أمية لا تكتب ولا تحسب. In both Sahih books, where Abdullah, son of Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with both of them, Ibn Umar says that he heard the Prophet uh, وسلم, uh, saying, we are an unlearned nation. We do not write and we do not calculate. This is what both Sahih books state. That is the Sahih of Bukhari and that of Islam. Uh, I wonder how many Arabs would agree with this text. Now, I have a different opinion. سأل البعض عن أبا جعفر الجواد عليه السلام لما سمي النبي صلى الله عليه وآله بالأمي قال وما يقول الناس قلت قلت له جعلت في ذاك يزعمون أنه سمي النبي صلى الله عليه وآله الأمي لأنه لم يكتب فقال كذبوا عليهم لعنة الله أن يكون ذلك والله تبارك وتعالى يقول في محكم كتابه هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة فكيف كان يعلمهم ما لا يحسن والله لقد كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يقرأ ويكتب بإثنين وسبعين أو بثلاثة وسبعين لسانا وإنما سمي الأمي لأنه كان من أهل مكة ومكة من أمهات القرى وذلك قول الله تعالى في كتابه ولتنذر أم القرى ومن حولها So أمي means he is a member of أم القرى not an letter not an educated he is the, the education personified someone asked أبو جعفر إمام Al-Jawad alayhi salam, why was the Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, called Ummi? He in turn asked, what do people say about that? The inquirer said to the Imam, may I be sacrificed for your sake? They claim that the Prophet, peace be, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and his progeny, was called Ummi because he did not know how to write. The Imam Islam said, they lied, may the curse of Allah be upon them. How can this be? While Allah, the most blessed, the most exalted one, says this in his perfect book. He it is who sent to the Ummis, to the Ummis, listen, he's using here all the Quran Ummis, a messenger from among their own selves to recite to them his signs, to purify them, and to teach them the book and the wisdom. So how could he teach them that which he himself did not master? May by Allah, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his progeny, used to read and write in 72 or 73 tongues. Rather, he was called Ummi, because he was born in Mecca, and Mecca was among the mother towns, Umm al qura Mother town, as the Holy Quran states, so you may warn Umm al qura the mother town, and those around it, Quran 692. Also notice the plural Ummis above, which refers to the people of Mecca who had among them businessmen who traded, who had a trade ties connecting them with people outside Arabia and who kept records of their business transactions and trade-related matters, as well as correspondence and bookkeeping. 
would you call these businessmen unlettered, illiterate, or unable to read and write? No. Now compare the above translation with mine. And I'll come to my own translation. I am here providing you with my translation of the entire verse. Say, oh Muhammad, oh people, I am sent to you all as the messenger of Allah to whom the dominion of the heavens and of the earth belongs. There is no God but he. It is he who brings back to life and who causes death. So believe in Allah and in his messenger, the Ummi prophet who believes in Allah and in his, and, and in his words, follow him so you may be rightly guided. So notice that I have used the word Ummi just as both as the Mir Ahmed Ali and Muhammad Habib Shakir, the latter being my favorite and Alhamdulillah, I have edited his translation, which is now available all over the world. Probably the most widely read translation is uh, Shakir's. All the praises is due to Allah, who enabled me to do that. Anyway, uh, now, why do I prefer to use the word Ummi? As I explained, because he was a member of Umm al -Qura. Okay, let's leave the number Sir, one. I'm I, afraid you're left with one minute. So. Okay. I okay, I go to the second point, I'll give the quote before you. Uh, the second one is ablution, the issue of wudu, the word of wudu, and uh, its soundness, soundness of wudu is an essential part of worship in Islam. In Islam. Uh, the hadith and wudu, ma'khud min al wada'a, wa hiya al ishraqa wa diya, wa al nur wa safa, wa al husn wa al nadafa. وهي الحالة التي يكون عليها باطل المتوضي والظاهرة حينما يتوضع فهو علامة الإيمان قال قال وأن 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 يحافظ على الوضوء إلا مؤمن رواه ابن ماجة. So what does the wudu verse wudu say? The verse says يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا قمتم إلى الصلاة فاغسلوا أيديكم وجوهكم وأيدي فاغسلوا وجوهكم وايديكم الى المرافق وامسحوا برؤوسكم وارجلكم الى الكعبين وامسحوا. Above is verse 6 of Surah Al Ma'ida, chapter 5. Here below is the translation by S.D. Mir Ahmed Ali. O ye who believe, uh, when ye get ready unto prayers, wash ye your faces and your hands with the elbows and wipe a part of your head and part of your feet on the end, up to the ankles, wipe or rub. So these are two, the two issues that prompted me to, to publish, uh, to spend years actually on the translating. Alhamdulillah, I, am, I belong to Al-Arab Al-Aribah, which means the genuine Arabs, the, those who, whose breed was 100% Arab. No, the Arab is the one like the ones in Sudan or Egypt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and thank you very much. And thank you again, organizers of the Quran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.